The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Technical Friday. We'll be doing a lot more based on the Chapman Wave methodology. I explain things as I move along, and I think this is really a critical moment. In fact, I do not like to see a peak D in the Chapman Wave. I'll make well start right from the beginning. I, like, I do not like to see a peak D, the fourth highest peak, um, unfold prior, underneath a previous high of D, E, or F, or G. Because it means, I, what I love is when you power higher and leg C just takes out the left side, form a high, and even if it's a recovery high, but it's a left side high, and you take it out and you've still got D to go. Because in the Chapman Wave methodology, we anticipate from a buy signal to a buy mode, there should be four higher peaks at least. Peak A, next one's peak B, one penny higher goes to peak C, peak D then, is a fourth one, and then it can go E, F, and G, but at D, other things can happen. And if that D is underneath the previous high, very often it's telling you that there isn't, unless you're coming off major lows, and we're way off the low from October. So that's, that's different. When you're coming off major low, obviously you're going to make Ds because you're coming off the low, even just a little bounce can take you to peak A, B, C, and D. That's very really different. So I'm looking at this and I'm saying, What's in store next week? And I think that by today's close, we're going to get a tremendous amount of information because there is so much in the way of, oops, there's so much in the way of uh, bifurcation on Wall Street. They like to look at the two separate uh, actions happening, sometimes in the same sector. Uh, but in this particular instance, we've made, we went to 34,082 today. Yesterday's high was 34,000. And, uh, and 54. So we've extended this leg D. We've done this leg D. Once we broke above C, we've gone one, two, three. This is the fourth candle above uh, C. But look, the nine period moving average is way above the 14. The MACD is very strong. The slow stochastic is fabulous because it's flat, holding 93%. On balance volume is a little bit overboard. And look at this gray line right here. This is the left side chart. That is the relative strength index, and that has been rising. Daily chart says, yes, you could pull back, but there's still internal strength unless there's a move that takes you below 33,000. We're at 33,894. I suspect to get this nine period moving average to cross the negative, it would be very bad news coming up soon. And you'd be trading way below the 33,368 14 period moving average. You'd have to go towards the 32,900s. It can happen, but so far all I'm saying is I said to subscribers, we're not doing anything. We're not buying anything today. Uh, yesterday, we uh, for the on Wednesday, we bought the three times long, a small position in the three times long. Uh, that was the S&P as a, as a kind of insurance policy as well as a potential trade if the Dow was to fail after that, that big pullback on Wednesday at about 3 o'clock. But you know what? Our uh, three times long, uh, UDOW held its stop and that continued much higher yesterday. So we've be, we've raised the stops and everything. Uh, I'm looking at this and saying, okay, let's see what happens next because we're in leg D. And here's the other thing. You see the weekly chart? <clears throat> You've got a pattern that I call the dreaded H. Let me just show you what the dreaded H is, if I can find it right. Oops, what happened to that? Uh oh, oh, it's covered. There it is. So the dreaded H is when I like to look at three basic patterns, straight up, straight down, cup formation, arch formation, mix of one and two or one and three. In this case, one and three, because you can see even on the left, you look, there's an H pattern that failed. Uh, and when the H pattern fails, if it takes out the left side low, especially if it's only a peak A or a peak B and it fails at a peak B minus, it can go a lot lower. Very nice on the upside when you get these uh, reverse Y patterns. But look what we've done here. We've done an arch formation. That's the H pattern. Took out the left side low. I usually give it two to three bars to close above that to say, hey, maybe there's strength. Well, it did close above this low of 
uh, on the week of the 23rd of December, 32,573. And then what happened is it rallied up and it went to what I call the Chap Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. Until it becomes a propellant zone, it's a repellent zone. We have one of those here, and it took it out. I didn't. I actually, it started off there, and we got our one-to-one -to, -one to the upside, which is basically what happens as a potential when this is very strong to a break to the upside through resistance. In this particular instance, we stopped dead right on the line. Ah, oh, today's high was right there. Look at the S&P. The S&P uh, has got the cup formation. And this cup formation will break out like this reverse Y. It'll break out sharply if we can get to leg D, which is above 4195.44 in the cash S&P. Well, today we went to an E in the daily chart, the one-to-one -to, -one to the upside. Actually, now I can move it to there, to that line. And we've done it almost exactly, one-to-one -one parallel motion. But now comes the issue. So once again, we're struggling at the, the monthly chart of the inside track repellent zone look it's not, time alone will move us out of this not if we pull back sharply so this says to me we've run the course to the upside we're at resistance points in the weekly and monthly charts the qqq which is what i like to see moving either parallel sometimes i like to see it leading the dow and the s p because it says that those high beta stocks are really showing uh, buying potential and buying action. Not seeing it here. We did see it to a nice bounce of that peak D. It's made a cup formation. It's stalled. See the weekly chart. It's done very nicely, but it has a long way to go to get to the 334.42 left side high from last year. That was, I think, in uh, September. Let me just check. Should have put the date. Uh, that was August. And now what we're looking at is the monthly chart has also got a lot of work to do. The, the MACD is rallying, but it hasn't crossed positive. Stochastic is rallying, but it's still very weak at 33%. But you've got 94% in the weekly chart of the QQQ. The MACD is strong. The line is way over the 14. And the daily has just crossed negative in the, in the MACD. Stochastic's weak at 67%. On balance, volume is weak. Yet the nine-period moving average is still sharply above the 14 my, my input here says I put a lot more weight in the nine-period moving average. Let me just show you something uh, as a good example. This is, the, um, this is the move that we saw from early this morning right there at 9.31. As the market opened, the nine-period moving flipped to positive in the one-minute E-mini chart. It went to peak D, E, F and G. I could count it another way as well and say that peak C1, C2 was uh, a top, and this is a brand new peak A, peak B, peak C, peak D. And then what happened with the doji candle? It made this little cup formation, failed, and the nine period moving average crossed negative right there, and now it's pink, and it means that there's, there's a sell mode going on in the one minute chart. Look at this almost Eiffel Tower move in the uh, in the 10-minute um, chart, spikes whopping up and then whopping down. So now the day actually at 10.20, this is exactly where I always say, this is where the other part of the market day begins. And we will look at JP Morgan and many other things. I almost mentioned the den. Uh, all right, I'll look at some other th questions that came in. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. 
These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. So a question came up about Slumberjay, Slumberjay oil and uh, gas driller is bumping right up. This is a pattern that I call the Chapman Wave. Uh, let's go to this right here. This is called the falling axe. I just like to nickname these things. Basically what it is, if I call it something sophisticated like uh, I, a, a declining um, cone formation, uh, probably would get a little bit more traction in terms of the vernacular. But actually, this is a beautiful technique. Look at this. Look how you, this, this trend line, I'll make it green. That's the resistance. But I like to do something else. A long time ago when I used to hand draw the charts, I found that there was a fantastic thing that happened. It was just, it was easy to see visually if you draw the line in, but you wouldn't really see it if you didn't do that. Well, look, this, I put the Chamber Wave Inside Track Repellent Zone. It's just like the uh, 16th or so of an inch. And it's a parallel, uh, two parallel lines making a channel, a little mini channel. And look how the resistance has been over and over and over for the decline since it made its high back in January, I think it was at six, at uh, 59, was it? 59.45 on January the 18th, Slumberger, well and gas, SLB. So what happens is right now, the MACD is good, stochastics at 78% and rising, on balance volume is rising, nine period moving average is over the 14. This is pretty good action for rig. I mean, for Slumberger. Um, and Slumberger says that if it can take out the left side high of the 3rd of April of 53.81 to go to 53.82, that starts leg C. Immediately, I can look to the left side to say, aha, the next resistance will be the 3rd of March with the price was 56.14. And it also says that this whole area of 51 to 50 is pretty good support. It's not one of the patterns that I like very much. This is the reverse Y pattern. It was a little too deep, but it needed to fill in the gap. And it filled the gap, almost filled the gap, and now it's moving to the upside. That's important. Now you can see the weekly chart has the same flag pattern, this expanding cone. So this is really important. And the MACD is improving, stochastics improving. The monthly chart is still very good. So what I'm going to say, the question was, um, could I look at it? Well, I'm looking at it, and I guess the question is, is this a time to be um, buying it right now? Let me just look at rig. This is, uh, it had almost the same pattern. 
uh, it's not acting as well. Transocean. But the monthly chart is still pretty darn good. So is the weekly, even though it's consolidating. Yeah, I'm going to say SLB uh, in your case because you like to look at things and give them a chance to have a, a, a bit of a wide stop so you can have the chance of a more intermediate term buy. I'm going to say start your position. Start your engines right now at 52.78. Um, I would, in your case, I'd have a two-point stop. But what I would do is if it takes out, as it moves up, if it can go above today's high, 53.15, if it can go to 53.32, I'd say somewhere around 53.32 by Monday, then I would start to raise the stop. I'd have a trading stop just at the moment. The moment it goes to leg C, give me a yellow and we'll look at it together. That's if it does. But it has a support in the around about 50 and a half to 50 uh, area. So that's that. Now, a couple of questions came in, but I'll deal with them as we move along. So I, I want to do um, go through some of these things. Let me just do this one more time. So Indu, the Dow is now down a little bit more. A fabulous move yesterday, but I said to subscribers, you can expect some give back of the last hour's rally. Uh, at least today, if it doesn't gap up and move much sharply, I immediately. So yeah, we are. And this is a 10:20 time frame. Yes, the new. This is where a different clientele in the market comes into the market. These are people who have been waiting for the open, and you know, people used to think, oh, there's people in the very beginning of the the, market, the opening session. Those are the dummies. I don't think so. In fact, we I talk about a, a two-click session. In other words, if you're trading the futures, there are times where the market pulls back early morning and you can go click long and you can sit there. You've had more one click session, two click sessions on the long side where you click in and you click out late in the day or at the close um, than on the way down. We did have the uh, uh, earlier on with the, with the bank crisis. Yes, obviously, there were two click sessions to the downside. But what I am looking at here, and I say, I, I say to myself, I don't think we've got a two-click session here today at all, unless it's a two-click session to the downside. And that might be the case. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, we're giving back some, and it is leg D, and it's still leg D in the Dow. And now, just as a technical Friday, I want to relate this to questions that have come in. So look at this. Here's a candle that looked really great early on as the S&P went to 41.63.19. It's now at 4135. Um, and it's at the low of the day, but the MACD and stochastic are still good. So I'm considering all this is going to be 4,000 all the way, yeah, all the way to 4,100, maybe even 40, uh, 4,090. I think could be strong support, and you should expect some kind of a pullback. Now I wanted to do show you this. Yeah, let me just move that away out of the way. There you go. Um, whoa! I didn't mean to do that. There. You are. No, I didn't mean to do that either. Oh, come on. Oh, there we are. Okay, everything's back to normal. Um, what I wanted to do is uh, to, to show you something. Uh, so the questions came in. The VIX index I discussed yesterday, I said, the, I don't know where I typed that, but let's see if I can type it here. The VIX index was trading down earlier on, and now it is trading And now it is trading um, up a penny at 14 at 1781. What I said was, in the way I look at the the VIX index, I believe something just like natural gas. I think something so unusual has happened to the volatility index that it doesn't have the same import that it had before. It's still very important, but it's only important when, at this particular point, the VIX starts to go into the 2180, 2230 area and hold. That's when the Dow is going to have strong, very sharp triple-digit down moves, the S&P uh, 90 points down, etc. So at this particular point, we've gone underneath the trend line support. Now I'm going to add another trend line support parallel to that, as if it's a Chapman Wave inside track support level. Whoops, let's just do that. There it is. And that takes you to exactly where we are. And it says it is getting to an area where you can't ignore it. There's a chance that over the next, uh, going into next week, we could, in fact, have a pretty strong bounce in the VIX index, which could start to impact uh, the, the, um, the general market. 
I don't see it yet because the 9 and 14 period moving averages, the 9 and 14 is a fantastic way to look at the markets. It just gives you, it can get you to stay, stay in a trade much longer than you would normally anticipate. That's number one. Number two is um, I wanted to get out of that to show you that in the gold, now gold is down deeper. It's down 33. It is a, in a leg G slash C with an instant restart there, a potential meaning that you could still go one more pop to the upside. But I'm suspecting that, look, put it together with the silver. <clears throat> Up against resistance in the Japan Wave uh, left side, right side price time match. That's the bar symmetry and it's broken out above it. And there's your Japan Wave inside red target resistance line. And we're right up against it. So I'm suspecting that we're about to see the metals pull back a little bit. And that might be a change of scenario. I had some questions that came in, but get to them right away. I just wanted to show you that crude oil is holding quite nicely above the 200 period moving edge. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30 day money back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the gold report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, everyone. So I just wanted to show you this. There's a pattern that I call the Eiffel Tower. It looks like an uppercase A, and it often happens at the 8.30 time frame, or it could be 10 o'clock, or it could be 2 o'clock on a Wednesday when the Fed comes out. There's a sudden spike to the upside, and then there's equally sharp drop to the left side, to the right side. And it looks like an uppercase A. And then I usually put it in, I fill it in, I put it right there to say, there it is. And what I said to the, uh, in the den this morning, I said that early on this morning, the uh, 4157 level is going to be very strong. Uh, that's the key support that we're looking at. Why did I say that? Because the 200 period moving average in the 10 minute chart of the E mini is at 41, now it's at 41.58. And there it is. And I put an X in to say at about uh, 4, 940, based on my methodology, there should be a lower test of that level. But in fact, what we did is at 940, that's when it spiked up. 
failed and now we're coming down. And so it's about uh, 40 minutes late. But there's your there's your test of this trend line. But they also did the narrow uh, rectangle formation. I don't know if I want to talk about that right now, but it's a technique that I talk about very often. And uh, it did make a PG in the in the one minute chart. I was I was busy yesterday. There was nothing I can do. I uh, couldn't do any trading. I probably could have, but I was so busy. So, okay. So that says uh, the uh, 4147 level is going to be what we're looking at. Let's just get out of this. I want you to do some other things. So question. So um, I, I want you to say crude oil is is is, is rallied. Now it's sort of stalling. Uh, the TLT, uh, TLT has had a very strong move to the downside, stuck with it. Remember, I said the TLT is in a rectangle formation. I have so much respect for the rectangles, I, I did a webinar. If any of you, if you are, um, if you are a subscriber, you can go to any one of my uh, eight, nine, ten uh, webinars. I discuss it in almost every one of them. And what's really important about this is that, uh, oh my, I forgot the question. I think I wrote it down. I had a question. I think it was Mr. Bill asked me, and now I, I can't remember if this was the question. Uh, let me have a look and uh, I'll check it out. I think I wrote it down. So I'm going to go cover all the questions in a moment. Uh, oh, Pig G, how on earth did you know that I looked at that this morning? And what a mind reader. Basil, what is a good entry point on TELL? I did work this morning and I thought, okay, I'm just not doing anything today. We've got our positions, good positions. I don't want to mess around. So TELL, I'm going backwards now. TELL is tellurium, I believe. It's tellurium. Yeah, it's uh, it's at a leg C. I like the action very much. I put it in my newsletter. I put, did I? I thought I put it in my newsletter in that top paragraph where I say these are things we're looking at tomorrow in my overview. Oh, I didn't put it in there, huh? Uh, but I did highlight it down at the bottom. Yeah. So anyway. It's not ready yet to, for an entrance right now. I'd like a little bit of a pull, a little bit more of a pullback. Um, I would just say, looking at it as a a turnaround potential. This is uh, TLL trading at 1.63 down, 0.08. Big percentages when you're in a low price stock. It's almost five percent down. Um, yeah, in your case, you know what I'm going to say. Just have a little nibble right here at 1.63. Nothing more than like whatever position you were gonna you would take, just get your foot in the door, just a tiny little bit, and let's watch it together. I've got it on my list of watch stocks because it, it has the potential to uh, move quite sharply. This is the first time it's hit the 14 period moving average, um, and first certainly the first time it's had a cl um, an intra intra week close above the four, 14 period moving average since it broke down. Back in September of last year, it was up in the fours. So it's a good sign to say the technicals are really improving. That's the reason why I liked it. It's kind of tricky because it's in an area, tellurium. Uh, it's a just, it's, I'm just going to say, let's uh, nibble here at 162, and let's look at it again. I'll put it in Tuesday. We'll look at it again. It's Monday, Tuesday, but Tuesday is really the day Tell I got it there. Okay. In your case, you're nibbling. And in your case, I'm not going to say have a stop. Um, because you know how to handle these things. It's a very, it's a very small position. So even if it drops 30%, it's it's it won't affect you in any way because this is your pilot light for this particular stock. All right, now I'm going to go back to my order. And, and, and Mr. Bull, if you can type in what you asked me earlier on. Um, oh, you asked about the fibs. That's right. Okay, let's go back to that. So, I you know I often put the. All the years, I've always I had great respect for, for, for the fibs because they've been discussed so often. Um, I kind of use them just as a visual back, backdrop. I don't use them like, like Larry does, who actually trades a very – and Tom O'Brien and, and, and Steve Rose. There are a lot of people here that really look at the fibs, and, and Tommy Jr. has been talking a lot about the fibs lately. I put them there, but I do find they get a little messy in my work. I just treat I treat them as something that I need to monitor because I think a lot of people are looking at it. But if you're looking at the fibs in the in the daily chart, I took it from the high that was made, and this is going to be a smoothed out contract. It's a continuous contract. My price here is 93.87 on the 7th of of uh, November. So I'm just using that, and you can see 
I, I'm actually amazed at how many times the fibs miss when you've got so many lines. But if you use it well and you use it accurately, there are times where if you use them in a, a chameleonic way, in other words, if you use them, monitoring them and changing them appropriate to the time period that you're looking at and it's pro appropriate to any changes that are made. In this particular instance, you can see I haven't gone to the low. Now I've gone to the low and now it's a little different. But you can see that the, I, the, the 81 to 82 area, not the actual number, has been incredible resistance for a long time. And it's right here, resistance. I prefer to look at the 200 period moving average. To me, that it's a way more, it's flexible. It's not straight line. It's not a horizontal line. It is a moving line. The, the internals of the actual price that you're following is giving you the exact levels. It's not just doing it as a, as a mathematical formula. It's doing it as an internal uh, let's call it a mathematical formula, which changes slightly. And you can see how it's moving down, down, down. And that's the saying that the, the general price of oil has been moving from lower highs to lower lows consistently. And this is the first time that you're actually getting higher highs and higher lows. So that makes that, that important. So I hope I'm explaining to you the way I use it um, in, the, um, in the methodology I combine it, and in fact, in this particular instance, I'm about to take it off because for my purpose, I find I've got other indicators that are way more important. Look, the 200 period moving average of 80.49 means if you start to close under 79, you, you start to fill the gap. But holding for, it's about a week and a half that it's trying to move away to the upside of the 200 period moving average, but it hasn't, says that crude oil, with the flat stochastic of 94 is really good. The MACD is good, and yet it hasn't had that extra skyrocket move that it needs with such a good um, uh, stochastic. So it says there's a lot of resistance right here. Not that. It's the magnet of the 200 period moving average is defying the pressure to push higher at the moment. So that's how I look at it. There are other times where I look at it and I say, isn't that remarkable how the Fibonacci number hit exactly? But as I say, I use so many other. Look at this, the technical tool I used in the weekly chart. Remember, I said, someone asked me about it and I said, if I use my propeller shaft methodology, this rectangle and that this vertical, I, I really only use the rectangle because I wanted a vertical line. And this horizontal line would give you an appropriate group to the 62 to 64, 60 level in crude oil and went down to 64 and now it's ready back up where? To the resistance. I'll be right back. There's so many things we want to talk about. Dow's will trap and tie conditions out. Dow's down 160. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, so uh, there was a statement in the, uh, in the den about... Uh, uh, QQQ is a rogue wave, or at least it's the spike that we were talking about, this Eiffel Tower spike. So let me just show you something. I, I just did this during the break. Um, there's nothing here, although I'm looking back, and you cannot be wrong when you're looking back. Uh, look at what I'm talking about. Um, it, the nine-period moving average from the low that was made this morning, the gap down low, and then we started on the QQQ. So that it goes after the bell. So after the 930 bell, we go alphabetically peak a b c d but the macd is still so strong and the nine is so strong over the 14 i like to just continue the alphabet until it goes e pulls back goes to an f and then it starts to turn down and almost immediately across the nine period moving average which was positive crosses negative and then what would i do i choose the the cup formation if i can't choose my eye says it's too long to use the left side, right side price time match to the vertical line, the plumb line, I use this right here. And what do we do? We get an exact number of bars from the left side to that particular point to bam, right there. I mean, look at that. Is that not amazing? And then look at the QQQ 10 minute chart right there. It went to a peak D, it pulled back. Actually, it didn't. The nine was still over the 14. I have a tough time putting a down arrow when that's the case. But the MACD did turn down, the stochastic turned down. Then there was that sudden news. So this is that same thing, that Eiffel Tower. Straight up, straight down, goes to an E, fails. Now we've gone underneath that. So just I wanted to do it live in the, the, the patterns that we're looking at. And they repeat over and over because this is just the market is just a reflection of human nature. It's a price point of human nature. That's all it is in the market. So let's do. So now I had a couple of questions that I need to get to right away. So um, so crude oil is at peak C. It should go to a D, and then we'll have a look to see how far does it go up towards 85, or does it come back to retest the 200 period moving average of 80.49? And that reminds me. On Wednesday, we've got, uh, uh, there's going to be a webinar, Teddy Kegstad does fantastic work. I mean, you remember a year and a half or so ago, he was talking about crude oil skyrocketing. He just, he does fabulous work. So he's doing this webinar, check it out on the front page of TFNN. Now, quick, let me do the questions. I, I'm, I'm going to do them as I, I, I wrote them down here. So um, I saw BBAI. I know we always get discussions about this, and then we, let me see if I got it. So BBI was one that we looked at. Uh, this is a big bear dot AI holdings. I can't remember if I had this all notated uh, when we looked at it the other day. Where are we now? So it made a peak C and a pullback, and there was a left side, right side price time match. I used this low as the um, the fulcrum right there i i can't remember did actually did we do i think in the what break a day two day a couple of days ago i was doing work on this and then i forgot about it so it came up this morning bbai i think it was bbai and look what happened it went to that leg d where's leg d from the plumb line i always like to bump into the left the grand canyon cliff to the downside and it takes it from the the bar right here on the 20 22nd of feb with a high of uh, 365 comes all the way down to a low of 1.51 uh, 1 on the 20th of March. And look, left side, right side, price time match with a chaff wave inside wedge target repellent line, green on the way up, red on the way down. 
and it said that it should, by the 14th of uh, April, try to get to that level of this high right here, which was three uh, $3.79. Today's high is three fifty five, but it is in leg D. So I hope that helps. I can't hear. What, was that Dan? I can't remember. I wrote it down. And then I, I so I, now I looked at it. Okay, so it's in leg D. Um, it makes the three, uh, three fifteen. No, it makes the two ninety two to two eighty eight area the support that must hold any move, and it has to try very quickly to try to get to the level on the left side we're looking at. Next question was Neo. So uh, GT said uh, calls on Neo. Oops, I wrote Neo on the on the on the actual chart. Let's just do it this way. NIO. This is a Chinese uh, electric car company. So calls, you know, I'm not looking at it that way. I think this is just stuck in a range. Um, it did that beautiful cup formation, but then it gave back way too much. So now it's just stuck in a range. I even drew this in as a, a butterfly. Uh, was it a butterfly? Well, a godly, a godly pattern. I can't, uh, no, it's a butterfly. Uh, I, one of Larry's some time ago. And I forgot all about it. I just looked at it right now and I said, oh, look at that. Uh, but that's the H pattern that goes to a lowercase m pattern. Remember, a lot of these patterns I'm discovering over the last couple of weeks that the patterns that I've been talking about for ages in my CD from 2005 CD book, I discussed these patterns. And some of them I, I'm learning have other, other connotations for, uh, for uh, some people. So for Larry, that's the that's the uh, godly, and now it's had a rally, but now it's failing. So I don't see anything much in, in Neo. Next question came up as um, uh, BBI, oh Google Googie. I, I remember I always look at Google G O O G. I never alphabet. I never look at uh, Google A shares or B or whatever it is. I look at what is this Google. C shares. I don't think these are the tradable ones, but it doesn't matter. This is the pattern I like to look at. The others mimic exactly. So this is peak A, peak B, peak C. There's your peak D. Now, you remember the pattern we were looking at, and I said it's got to go nicely above that, and the uh, S&P made a peak E. What happens next is going to be very important. I'm calling this an E right now. It could be an alternate count if it takes out the left side high. I'm going to call it an F. I actually like this pattern very much. I had drawn in the cup formation earlier. Now it's extended much. It's taken a much longer time to, to unfold. But I do like it. I think it's trying to make a significant low from the um, October low. I think it's trying very, very hard to create a base from which it will break out at some point, maybe in the summer and get to the 120 to 125 area to say, phew, I've left that area of the 90, 80s and 90s. Just I'm done with that. But it hasn't. it's not done with it just yet. Right now it is in leg D in the weekly chart. I like it. If you're along, I'm just going to say, I'm not going to interfere with your position. If you're along, I would stay along. But what I would say is that if next week, and next week I think is going to be very important because in a sense, I think we kind of we're getting a little bit overbought emotionally. That is, that's a very different thing. I don't know how to gauge that. That's not the VIX index. It's just it's another way that I look at it. And I'm just saying to you, this in essence is a cup and a handle formation. And my suspicion is that even if Google breaks to the 112 or 13 area, it will come back and test the 106 to 104, even 103, the 20, the 200 period moving average. I like it very much. I think it started on its way. Would I add to it now? No, it fits in the same category as Amazon. Fabulous move, nice move off the lows, not as good as Google's action, but a nice move. And now it's trying to establish now, this is where I have used the Fibonacci's, and you can see Fibonacci's being good support and good resistance. So I'm going to keep it there. I don't like uh, uh, things that start to get a little bit messy, but I am going to keep it there. And the weekly chart needs a lot of work. So I'm putting them in, a, in the same category. I'm saying Google's stronger than Amazon. Amazon has to do with retail. And that tells me that retail is going to stall a little bit longer. So my thinking here is that uh, Amazon is going to be stuck between maybe 100 and, and 105, 106 and support in the 98 area for a little bit longer. That's my impression. Down, down 144, I'll be right back. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians Hour.
TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN com You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. A question came in about Ethereum. Uh, Ethereum, I happen to have done quite a lot of work for subscribers, but we haven't got it, and I keep missing it uh, for Mara, which is the same sort of thing, also in the Bitcoin area. Um, I've already done the work there. Uh, that's had a very nice move to leg E. This is a leg C in the weekly chart, and it's just coming off the bottom in the monthly marathon digital holdings. So ETH E actually has a, a similar pattern in the monthly, but I actually like the weekly a lot. And the weekly chart has gone, uh, for the daily chart, has gone to a doji candle, G slash C, making the 10.13. Uh, ETH is a symbol trading at 10.77 up 29 cents. And it makes the 200 period moving average of 10.13 really important. So the question is uh, an analysis of it. Well, as far as I'm uh, concerned, uh, this is in play. However, um, at this point, I have to say uh, the nine period moving average is way up the 14. It's way above the 14. The 200 period moving average is actually way above. I prefer if the 200 period now is below. So this just says that the whole area of 10.30 to 9.30 is going to be key support on any disappointment in this particular area. That can happen. But what's really important is the cup formation that's formed in the weekly using this fulcrum of the exact low that was, I think, either January or December. 
Um, we've gone right to that point. We're just a few points, uh, we're uh, maybe a few cents away from the high of the 1130 level of the week of the 4th of November. But I like to bump up against the Grand Canyon wall on the left on the way down. So that says that this is a good left side, right side. This is the week. So if it goes on for next week, I've got to move that plumb line a little bit more. But in the meantime, I like it. Where would I get in? Oh, it's, it's tough for me to say right here to get in. What I would say is in your case, you like to look longer term. I'll talk about it as soon as I return. Oh no, this is it. The end of the show. Oh, that's the end of the show. And I still have more to look at. Have a wonderful rest of the week.